We begin today with the House GOP's investigation into the Biden family. Of course, as Hunter Biden, the DOJ plea deal is set to go before a federal judge just two days on Wednesday. Welcome in. I'm Bianca De La Garza. And I'm John Huddy. Thanks so much for joining us. The president's son will appear in court for the first time and is expected to plead guilty to misdemeanor tax fraud charges and felony gun possession. Now, that hearing comes as Republicans on Capitol Hill are pushing for prosecutors to include the IRS whistleblower testimony in the case, Bianca. And as the House Oversight Committee investigates claims that President Biden was also heavily involved in Hunter's overseas business dealings, allegedly. The New York Post is saying James Comer's committee could hear testimony from Hunter Biden's former business partner, a man by the name of Devin Archer, this week. Now, Congressman Comer also says that they have new Biden family bank records that he says point to the president's influence peddling. That's right. National correspondent Logan Raddick joins us now with the latest developments. Logan, good afternoon. John and Bianca and Chairman Comer says that those bank records show transactions between Biden family members and Russian and Ukrainian businesses. But Chairman Comer went on Senator Ted Cruz's podcast, The Verdict, and he also said he believes that President Biden's alleged involvement in his family's alleged influence peddling scheme has gone back further than we know. I think that Joe Biden has been selling access to our enemies for decades, I think that- So long before Hunter was involved. Long so so let me Hunter stop you involved. on that. You if you study Joe Biden like I have, uh, he's always been cash strapped. Uh, he, he's never had a successful career in investing or anything like that. Then you look at the assets he's accumulated on a Senate salary, it, it's pretty, pretty impressive. And you look at the upkeep to those assets, And those assets that Comer is alluding to include Joe Biden's vintage Corvette, his big primary home in Wilmington, Delaware, and his second home in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Comer also notes that for 36 years, while Joe Biden was a senator, he frequently referred to himself as the poorest man in Congress. Now, Comer's oversight committee is focusing on allegations made to a paid FBI informant that Mikola Zlachevsky, the head of Burisma Holdings, that was the company in Ukraine that Hunter Biden sat on the board of, paid $5 million to both then Vice President Joe Biden and Hunter to pressure the Ukrainian government to fire the prosecutor investigating Burisma. But Chairman Comer also made this claim on the podcast. I think that that Obama knew this was going on towards the end, and I think that's why Obama didn't want Biden to run for president. And Hunter Biden's longtime former best friend and business partner, Devin Archer, may testify before Comer's House Oversight Committee this week. New York Post is reporting that Archer will say Hunter would include his father, who was vice president at the time, in phone conversations with overseas business partners. But Comer says Archer has canceled three depositions. He also hoped to bring him in today, but uh, that is not happening. It could happen as early as Thursday, but it is not a given. Archer is under subpoena from the Oversight Committee. Now, the White House continues to deny any wrongdoing, and President Joe Biden says he had no involvement in his family's foreign business dealings, including when he was vice president. Back to you. Okay, Logan Raddick uh, with the very latest. Logan, thank you. Thanks, Logan. And joining us now to talk about the Biden family investigation is former acting attorney general and Newsmax analyst Matthew Whitaker. Good to see you, Matt. It's good to be with you both today. Let's uh, talk a little bit about Devin Archer then, uh, subpoenaed uh, three times, may be coming in this week, and the House Oversight Committee tweeting this. Obviously, this is a critical point here, which he may confirm. Joe was on the phone in at least a dozen instances. Hunter put his father, then VP, on speakerphone with his overseas business partners. But as we've heard over and over, the president has denied this. Uh, let's play a clip from just this past June. President Biden, how involved were you in your son's Chinese shakedown text message? Were you sitting there? Mr. Were you involved? Uh, were you involved? No, involved? I wasn't. Were, uh, were, I don't were you? No. All right, so Archer uh, may obviously have a lot to say. If you were going to interview him, what would you like to know? Possibly also something about the uh, prosecutor, Victor Shokin, uh, who was investigating Burisma, then fired. Yeah, so much of this obviously is just coming to light, but the, what you said 
is so important that they believe Devin Archer is going to say that Joe Biden joined his son on the phone uh, during his son's business dealings. Uh, obviously, those business dealings were creating revenue for at least Hunter Biden. We're led to believe now through these multiple shell companies that that money flowed to many people in the Biden family. And so, you know, that is the next, I think, uh, layer of this onion. As, as uh, Chairman Comer continues to peel it back, we're seeing more and more how uh, the Biden family did business. And if Joe Biden was seriously on the phone, and that is that can be verified uh, through this testimony, uh, that is uh, an incredibly big development that I think uh, leads uh, this investigation deeper into public corruption grounds. Yeah, I mean, I guess the key, Matt, would really be tracing the money, right? I mean, following the money to, you know, vice, then Vice President Biden, now, of course, President Biden. Um, I, is there, would there be anything criminal, though, with him being on the phone? I mean, obviously, the optics are really bad right now, but following the money would be the crux yeah. of this, right? Yeah, there are some clear statutes that say um, you obviously can't uh, use your position in the federal government to, for your own benefit or for the benefit of your family. And I think the really interesting thing as we learn more and more about how the Biden family did business is this idea that, you know, Hunter Biden, he has said, um, my understanding and things that I've read from his laptop, that, you know, he complained about how his dad uh, was supported through Hunter's business dealings. And I think that's what we're going to have to see is did, did this money uh, or did it work its way to support Joe Biden? Did it support others in the Biden family? And I mean, that would be a clear violation of federal law if that's the case. Let, let's talk, I'm sorry, did you wanna jump in? I was just gonna bring up the, the, um, uh, the plea deal hearing, Matt. So House Ways and Means Chairman yeah. Jason Smith sent a letter to A.G. Garland and David Weiss last week uh, placing the attached materials into the record is critical, according to this letter, um, because the testimony provided by two IRS whistleblowers brings new and compelling facts to light, and because it is essential for the judge in this matter to have relevant information before her when evaluating the plea agreement. What difference would that make, though? The, the, the judge can't necessarily overturn or withdraw the plea agreement at this point, can she? Yeah, so this judge has a very important role. She can either accept the plea agreement or reject the plea agreement. And, you know, having the context of how um, this investigation was conducted is one important thing in that. You know, also, um, the, what would happen if the judge rejected it and said that this isn't in the heartland of the typical plea agreements for tax and gun violations uh, and sends uh, both the defense and the prosecution, more importantly, back to the drawing board. You know, a lot, many of the most serious offenses have uh, been time barred by a statute of limitations, but at the same time, you know, I think that this is a sweetheart deal. I've said that many times on this and other networks. And so, you know, I would expect that this judge is going to seriously consider and may not even rule this week on whether she accepts it or not. Mm. Yeah, wow. uh, there's a lot of things in play, um, including talks of impeachment with uh, Merrick Garland. But before we let you go, just about 30 seconds, amidst all of this, Hunter's lawyer, Abby Lowell, filed an ethics complaint against Marjorie Taylor Greene after she showed some, you know, pretty explicit photos. Um, he said that the House has a duty to make loud and clear it does not endorse, condone, or agree with her outrageous, undignified conduct. I mean, he is doing his job, but with 30 seconds left here, isn't this a little bit interesting that he's talking about ethics when she was talking about maybe a violation of the Mann Act here with Hunter and interstate prostitution? Yeah. No, and I think that evidence uh, needs to be shared with the American people. Obviously, these ethics complaints are easy to file, uh, but oftentimes in the House especially, uh, the Ethics Committee uh, has a very hard time acting on them, but, you know, this is obviously uh, an attempt by Hunter Biden's team to try to discredit the entire hearing. Uh, but much of what we heard from those whistleblowers was compelling, and they were very, very credible witnesses. Mm. Former Acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker, thanks so much. Good to see you and appreciate your insight today. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Right. Good to see you both.